Situation ethics. Situation ethics is another teleological slash consequentialist theory devised by Joseph Fletcher. It is based on the Christian principle of agape love, which means selfless love, and it's based on Luke 10.27. The principle for it is the greatest amount of love for the greatest number, to always do the most loving thing. It's also seen as the middle way approach. Legalism is following rules absolutely to make moral decisions, and antinomianism is basing your decisions on conscience reasoning, not laws. Whereas situation ethics applies the single Christian principle of agape love to each and every situation. Joseph Fletcher set out four working presumptions to follow situation ethics. Pragmatism is that the course of action must be practical and work. Positism is where the situationist freely believes in agape love as described by Christianity. Personalism, people must come first and benefit from laws. Laws come after. Relativism, there is never a never or always as each situation is different. Situation ethics also follows six fundamental principles. 1. Only love is intrinsically good, nothing else. Actions aren't good or bad in themselves, and an action is only good if it produces the most love in a situation. For example, a soldier commits suicide when captured under torture to prevent himself from betraying his friends. This action would be right in this situation as it produces the most love. 2. The ruling norm of Christianity is love, nothing else. Love is the boss, and law is the servant. Love only employs the law if it's worthwhile. Selfless love is the ultimate law. Fletcher uses the example of Mrs. Bergemeyer. This woman asked the guard at a prison camp to impregnate her so she could leave the camp and return home to her family. She had the child. The family welcomed her back with no problems. Even though this broke the law, it was more worthwhile employing love. 3. Love equals justice. Justice is love in action. Love includes all people. So, if a doctor gives an operation to a mother of three rather than an old skid row drunk, this is justice as it's the most love for the most amount of people. 4. Love your neighbour even if you dislike them. Love must be selfless, it must satisfy the needs of others, and it's not sentimental. For example, you would save a medical genius over your father from a burning building, as this is the most loving thing to do. 5. Only the end justifies the means, nothing else, if the end is love. This means you can break a duty if it's loving to do so. For example, a priest breaks canon law to tell a murderer's confession so that an innocent man will be saved from execution. 6. Love's decisions are made situationally. It's conscience bound and it changes in every situation so it can't be predetermined. For example, asking some men to die after a boat crash so some can be saved creates the greatest amount of love for the greatest number of people. However, in another situation, it may not be right to do this, as it may not create the greatest amount of love. Although you can use all of the case studies I provided when talking about Fletcher's six fundamental principles, you could also apply to Save Your Siblings or Special Bombing Mission 13. Strengths of Situation Ethics It's relativist, meaning it's flexible and allows different individual responses to different contexts. Therefore, there are exceptions to rules, which is useful. It's also up-to-date. Situation allows you to change with the times. This means ideas about marriage, sexuality and medical ethics. It's social justice. Agape motivates people to change things for the better, getting rid of it, discrimination, etc. And a system of rules doesn't bring about change, but change is needed. It's also situationist, which is a good way for the church to reconcile strict rules in the Bible with Jesus' approach, as Jesus criticised the Pharisees for being legalistic. 
Even though it would be wrong to get rid of all rules, situation ethics is a midway approach between the two, which allows Christians to consult the Bible and church tradition, but put these to side if love demands it. Weaknesses It's vague. It's impossible to say what you're supposed to do. How can you work out what the most loving thing is if it changes from situation to situation? It can also allow evil consequences. It can allow terrible things such as adultery, theft, lying and murder, all in the name of love. But does that make it right? It also isolates the church because the individuals can act independently. Therefore, the church has no place in moral decision making. Yet, wise men have debated these topics for generations. Yet, the individual is assumed to be able to make a more informed decision on the spur of the moment. It also focuses only on motive. But just because you act out of love, this doesn't mean that you have done the right thing. Reason, not love.